friends, today I would like to introduce you to a country of contrasts, a place where you can find the concrete jungle of large modern cities and remote villages of primitive tribes, impenetrable rainforests, and comfortable beaches with luxurious hotels. This is Indonesia. About Indonesia in the former Soviet Union no not so much, constantly on hearing only the island of Bali, so beloved by our tourists. Meanwhile, this Asian country has a lot of interesting things. Today, I will tell you about the largest volcanic lake on the planet, the most densely populated island in the world, and seemingly crazy idea to move the capital from Jakarta to the newly built city, which would make the implementation of this plan one of the biggest construction projects of the decade. The Republic of Indonesia is a country with many surprises. First of all, it is the fourth most populous country in the world, more than 270 million people, with about 300 peoples living on its territory and 700 living languages, although only one, Indonesian, is recognized as official. This diversity is due, among other things, to the fact that Indonesia is the largest island state in the world and has almost 18,000 islands, of which only 6,000 are inhabited. Such a population scattered over over so many separate territories makes this country truly unique. The first state formations in this region originated in the first century, and in the 16th century colonizers arrived from the old world. By the early 20th century, almost all of what is now Indonesia was taken over by the Dutch. It became independent only in 1945, before it went through three years of Japanese occupation. Today's Indonesia is one of the the most promising economically developing countries. At the same time, there is an incredible divide between the rich and the poor, and it is hard not to notice the contrast between the chic skyscrapers and the poor villages. However, we are similar to them in this respect, but otherwise, it is a completely different country. The direct trump card of Indonesia is the stunning nature, perhaps the main and distinctive feature, incredible diversity. Area of the country is less than one and a half percent of the world's land, and and here in this relatively modest in size area managed to get about 17% of the biological species of the earth. In general, if you want to get acquainted with a large number of unique plants and animals, then you are welcome to Indonesia, who cannot be found here, for example, Komodo varan, endemic species, listed in the Red Book. The largest lizard, which managed to survive to this day, or the sweetest inhabitant of Indonesian forests, the Eastern Longhorn. About the plants I do not even say, although I should mention one, it is a species of plant parasites. It besides its unusual appearance is also unique in that it is the largest flower in the world. So in 2020, a flower with a diameter of 122 centimeters was found on the island of Sumatra, which was an absolute record. The largest island in the entire region, New Guinea. It is the second largest in the world after Greenland. But it would be wrong to call it the largest in Indonesia, since the island lost from another state, namely with Papua New Guinea. Therefore, the largest island that belongs entirely to Indonesia is Sumatra, with a population of over 50 million people. One of the most famous natural features of Sumatra is Lake Toba, which is almost 87 kilometers long and is very popular among fans of eco and ethno-tourism. You can enjoy the unique natural beauty and touch the life and culture of the Batak people who live in pile houses. Toba is the largest volcanic lake in the world. It is located inside a huge caldera, which was formed as a result of a giant eruption of the volcano with the same name. It is especially striking when you look at it from above and see how the lake forms a peculiar ring, and its shape is very similar to the shape of the island itself. 
It is a very beautiful place and can impress anyone, even the most fastidious tourist. The most urbanized island of Indonesia, which is home to more than half of the inhabitants of the country, is Java. As of 2020, Java is the most populous island in the world with a population of 148 million. This is almost 3 million more than the population of Russia. The current capital of Indonesia, Jakarta, is located on this island. Jakarta is located on the northwest coast of Java. It was officially founded in 1527 and received its capital status in 1945, just after the country gained its independence. At the moment, what was once the seaport of the Dutch island of India has become the largest industrial center of the country and is a densely populated metropolis with a population of over 10 million people, and its agglomeration is one of the largest in the world, second only to Tokyo, and as of 2019 had almost 35 million people. Now Jakarta is the industrial educational and tourist center of the country and Southeast Asia as a whole. It is home to major ports, international airports, and Indonesia's best universities. It is a modern city with a large number of attractions, modern high-rise buildings and unique Asian flavor, and the average annual temperature in Jakarta never drops below 27 degrees. It seems only natural that Jakarta, which has been steadily increasing its political and economic influence, has been the capital of Indonesia for the past decades. But due to a number of factors, in 2019 Indonesian President Joko Widodo announced that Jakarta would be stripped of its capital status in the coming years, and the new capital will be relocated almost 1,300 kilometers to the east, to the third largest island in the world Kalimantan, better known to us as Borneo. Now the proposed territory of the new capital has no urban development and is largely overgrown with forest. In addition to Indonesia, the island itself is divided with two other countries, Malaysia and Brunei. But why did politicians decide to take such an unpopular and incredibly expensive step as relocating the capital? It turns out that more than half of Jakarta is already below sea level and without serious work to limit the submergence of the northwestern part of the island by 2050, 25% of the capital will be submerged. In addition to global warming, which raises water levels, the territory of Jakarta itself sinks by an average of 10 to 20 centimeters a year, and during the rainy season, many areas are already suffering from flooding. Such subsidence of the soil is due to the rapid uncontrolled development of the city. There is massive pumping of groundwater, but they do not have time to replenish due to the large area of concrete city. The rainwater simply cannot get into the soil. Dense construction of high-rise buildings also contributes to subsidence, and another Another serious problem is the poor ecology and pollution of local rivers. In addition, the city's infrastructure is clearly outdated and inadequate. Jakarta has some of the worst traffic jams. The new capital will be built from scratch as I said earlier. The island of Kalimantan was chosen for construction. The preliminary budget for such an ambitious project is almost $33 billion. The competition for the design of the city has already been held, which was won by the Indonesian company Nagara Rimbanusa. It is helped by experts from China, Japan, and other countries. January 18, 2022 parliamentarians approved a law on the capital of the state. Urban planning work is to begin in July 2022, and in January 2022 it was announced the name of the new capital Nusantara. This word can literally be translated translated as inter-island archipelago. According to computer visualizations, the future capital appeared as a futuristic city surrounded by nature, including dense tropical forests. All residents will be within a 10-minute walk from green recreation areas. Each high-rise building will be 100% environmentally friendly and energy efficient. Of the trips around the city, 
80% will be made by public transport, on foot, or by bicycle. According to the idea the future capital of Indonesia will be a multi-level city, in some parts will be erected artificial canopies, covered and solar panels. Nusantara should take its first residence in 2024. Most of them will be employees of the Indonesian government. The city will be developed in stages until 2045. Indonesian authorities also expect that in the next decade, up to half of Jakarta's population will migrate to the new capital. In theory, everything looks very tempting. Despite the pretty picture, the project has many critics, among the arguments that opponents of the transfer of the capital not reasonable to spend so much public money when the country is experiencing economic difficulties, but it is quite possible that the project will begin to be implemented, since at the state level everything has already been decided. The only question is whether this will make it better for ordinary Indonesians, but if they really manage to realize their idea, it will be one of the most ambitious projects in Southeast Asia. That's all, friends. Share the video if you were interested. Write a comment and give me likes. See you in the next video.